at one of those alumni banquets, I had the honor of sitting with David and interviewing him and hearing his story for at least 15, 20 minutes, and we got that on camera. Uh, he shared the story of his family and how when he was a little boy, he could throw a stone and see and hit John Hanley High School, but he couldn't attend John Hanley High School. His parents took their family and they moved all the way across town, which was a long way back then, right? So that they could be close to the Douglas School and the kids could walk to Douglas School. Fast forward 10 years or so, uh, David was part of integration, went back to John Hanley High School or went to John Hanley High School as a high school student. He shared with me that while integration from a historical point of view, from a long-term justice point of view, was the right thing. Um, he was sad to leave Douglas School. He, had a, he was excited as a young child to, to go and be in the high school part of Douglas and play basketball and sports as he had seen the older students do. But he went to John Hanley High School. Fortunately, um, he did very well at Hanley. Part of that he credits to being an athlete, went on to college and eventually became a, an elementary school teacher. But that's, that story drives me to this day because of the move. And at the end of his interview, he reflectively shook his head and simply said, Jason, it didn't have to be that hard. At first I didn't quite connect with what he was talking about, but he was referring to the move. There was a school right in his own front yard, and he was not allowed to attend it because of the color of his skin. And so when I left that night, I asked myself that question. I'm a person in leadership here in the city. Many of you know that I, I believe in equity. I want desperately for our community, for our country, to really realize the hopes and dreams of the Constitution. And I asked myself, what will people say 50 years from now about my decision making? Right? And what will they say, Jason, you didn't have to make it that hard. It, it's not that hard. And it's a challenge that I gave to my leaders, to our principals, and to our central office staff. As we make decisions every day that affect the lives of children in this community, what are the barriers that we're not eliminating? What are the barriers we're not demolishing so that it doesn't have to be so hard? And so today I ask that you leave with that in the back of your mind. Because we're all, many of us are leaders in this community. We all are leaders in this community. And there are things right now in 2020 that are holding us back, holding people back because of their differences, whether it's the color of their skin, whether it's gender, whether it's their sexual orientation, whether it's whatever their, their uh, difference is. And we have an opportunity to use this renovation as a memorial and a monument clearly declare and remind ourselves every single day that we can eliminate those barriers. And, and what can we do to make sure it doesn't have to be that hard? I wanted to share that story with you because it meant so much to me and it continues to drive me.